What's going on everybody? We're fixing to kick off March, the month of preparing. Come back and let's get started. What's going on everybody? How's the outdoor crew doing? We're gonna start off the month of March is gonna be the month of preparing. Not prepping, not preparedness, but preparing. The first one I'm gonna start off with is um, one that's <laughs> it's actually already starting to happen around here. Um, talking about being weather prepared. Now, weather can strike in any, any form, fashion, any point in time, any time of the year. I will tell you, in the state of Tennessee, we've had tornadoes in January and December. We've had them in the middle of March, April, May. Um, I've seen them ramp up in September. So we are considered the tornado Dixie Belt or something like that. We're not part of the, the Oklahoma, Kansas and all that, but we're part of the Dixie Belt. And yes, we have our time of the year that we normally this kind of stuff happens. So with that said, the last weekend in February, we had tornadoes hit Tennessee. Uh, there was one in Union City and one in Clarksville. Um, don't know the severity of them yet. I would not. I, there was one house in Clarksville that was totally leveled. Uh, they actually showed them on the news that morning, the morning after, and they were digging through the house and found a live dog in the house. Come out and his tail wagging and everything. He was in good shape. Uh, they let him off. Uh, I think that family in that house was injured, unfortunately. So, know what to do before. So before, here's what you keep an eye on. And keep an eye on your forecast like you know, everybody does on their cell phone this day and age. Plus watching the nightly, uh, the local news. If they say Saturday, there's a chance of severe weather. Well, you know now Saturday is going to be your chance of severe weather. If you're going to be home all day, you prepare your area. You know, if they say it's just going to be thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms, well, even severe thunderstorms can have straight line winds that can cause damage. Um, so one of the, the first things you should do is make sure you have communications, whether that be a... NOAA radio, a, your radio in your car or around the house. If you're out in the woods, the even these will work. Um, I even have ham radios, portable ham radios. You can locate them, but now you have to be careful with ham radios. You need to be licensed to be on a ham radio. So I don't suggest those for everybody. If you plan on getting your license, then go for it. Um, so anyway, you've got all your lines of communications this day and age. All your cell phones, you can set them up to get receive warnings. Uh, there's several apps, of course, your Weather Channel apps, your local news apps. Um, American Red Cross app actually has a section for weather, and it alerts you to weather warnings, severe weather warnings. Now, the next thing is, before it happens too, is know what they're talking about. Now I'm posting this video hoping there's going to be some young people that watch this that does not know the difference. And there's some people out there that really don't know the difference. And I've heard uh, people even say, hey, I hear we're under a tornado watch. Oh my God, what are we going to do? I was like, nothing yet, because you should be ready to do what you got to do. Um, or we're under a severe thunderstorm watch. Well, that doesn't mean anything. You know, we live in Tennessee. It can miss us totally. It's when it gets into the warning stage. That's when you, that's when it's fixing to happen. Um, so that, that's, that's your main two um, definitions of those two words. When I say there's a tornado watch or a severe thunderstorm watch, that means conditions are possible that something could happen. When I say it's a warning, that means it's happening. Um, so you seek shelter, you do what you gotta do to get out of harm's way. Now, I'm gonna show you something in the home we keep these around as bicycle helmets. I also keep a couple other helmets around. 
anything to protect your head. Uh, University of State Oklahoma come out, big weather um, school for the nation because Tornado Alley um, and their snowfall varies from year to year. I mean, they can get some huge snows in Oklahoma. So anyway, it's a big school for weather. One of the things they came out with and said is that even a simple bicycle helmet on your head during a tornado will protect your head. It may not protect the rest of you, but it will definitely protect your head. So remember that. So even a simple bicycle helmet, and this is your DOT, well, yeah, I think it's DOT. It's whatever it is approved. Bicycle helmet for riding bikes. We keep a couple of these laying around, plus I've got a couple other helmets, even a construction helmet. You know, think about it. Anything to keep debris from entering your head or hitting your head. Um, another thing before, sit down and come up with a disaster plan for you and your family. Uh, American Red Cross puts this out. I will leave a link to this web to uh, my uh, to this website to this particular disaster plan, so that you can make it up and you know issue it to your kids. If you got, especially if you got kids that drive. That are in high school or something something that you know gives them a place to okay this is where i go this is what i do if i'm at school and I, we leave school after a tornado's hit our area or some kind of any kind of disaster happens you know i know well if i can't get home i'm supposed to meet at xyz grocery store in the parking lot and my parents know if they can't get home that's where i'll be that's where i need to go um they suggest to have up to th three different locations. So say for instance, you say meet at home first, can't get there. Meet at Kroger's, well, guess what? They've blocked off that parking lot because they're using it for um, staging area. Well, then you come up with a third one. It's wherever you can make it, you know, that's convenient and easy to get to. Uh, and that's something else. Make sure it's something that is easy and inconvenient to get to. Uh, that way, the you know, if you got teenagers trying to get there, they're not trying to freak out, you know, going down roads that they really don't need to be going down in a storm, after a storm. Okay, the next thing, if you're at home, have a survival kit ready to go. When I say a survival kit, when I was a Scouts, we made it what we called a, a survival box. There's a list of what you can put in this box that I'm going to have on my website. So you can go to my website, you can click on it. Uh, I think it's set, I think it's titled what you should do, what you should know about severe weather. And in that link, you will find this list. Uh, it's a pretty simple list. If you're not a prepper, this is a perfect list for you to build. We're talking one of the tubs from um, Walmart. Fill this thing up with this stuff, put it somewhere it's safe that you know if a house is hit you can still grab this and it'll probably be okay um, number two thing um, you want to do is make sure your cell phone is charged completely so warning happens storms hit what do you do next well if it's a tornado you get in your safe spot in your house if a house like ours we do not have a basement our next house will have a uh, built-in storm room We've talked about building one here, having it done here in the garage, and we may still do it before it's over with, a safe room. Um, get in the lowest floor of your house, the most interior room. We have a bathroom that's surrounded by walls. When I say it's surrounded by walls, it's literally almost in the middle of the house. So we're in good shape there. We would get in that bathroom, we would be okay. Um, once it's over with, the first thing that's going to be priority is make sure you're okay. Keep a first aid kit with you during that time. If you have a made up first at home first aid kit or a bought first aid kit, put it in that room that you're going to be in trying to hunker down. That way it's with you. That way you have to enter, uh, administer first aid right off the bat. It's there. It's good to go. A flashlight, especially if it happens at night, make sure there's a flashlight in with that first aid kit or with you when you go in that room. Um, you might, if you have a vanity in that bathroom, turn that vanity into your, okay, this is our bathroom we're going to, or this is our room we're going to. We're going to keep this stuff, the supply here, indefinitely. Um, so the other thing you want to do is, if you keep a flashlight or radio of any kind, 
Um, and radio, speaking of radios, I'll leave a link to the crank radio uh, on my on on YouTube here that you can go to and check that out. I, that to me, that's the number one thing you get all to have is a crank radio, not have to worry about batteries lasting. But if you keep stuff like that into a under a sink or whatever in that box, you want to keep a check on your batteries. I'd say check them every six months. Make sure everything works and works great. And I'd say every year, replenish them regardless if it's ever been on. I know some of the Duracells say they'll last 10 years. So, you know, they're all coming out saying, hey, we'll last 10 years on the shelf. You don't want to risk, you know, if this is a life safety thing, you don't want to risk it. Okay, so uh, create a communications plan with your family before severe weather hits. Have emergency supplies on hand. That's the other thing. Listen to your local officials. What is the weather telling you? Um, if you're able to listen to, and I'm just going to put this out there. If you're able to listen to police or fire scanners, um, that sometimes can help too. Um, you know, especially if you're home, especially at night and all that good stuff. Check and make sure you have your life insurance and your policies all up to date and everything's, you know, good to go. Um, if the authorities tell you it's time to leave, have that bag and we'll, we'll say the word now, bug out bag. But it's not really, I mean, it can be a bug out bag. And, and you, if you don't want to call it that, it's my, I've got to leave home for the day bag because of weather. Uh, I'm having to evacuate, whether it's a gas leak or something of that nature. And they tell you, you know, you're going to have to go somewhere until this is over with. So you need a bag of stuff to take with you and have it ready to go by the door at all times. Guys, I want to keep this kind of short, but it is important because, like I said, it's already happening. Uh, we've already had tornadoes hit Tennessee at the end of February. And it's going to start happening even more. People in Oklahoma, they stay ready for it. Um, you know, up north, you don't get it as bad as we do, but you do get those surprise tornadoes in Michigan even, in, you know, Pittsburgh, you know, different areas up in that up north. They just fall a little later in the year. So anyways, guys, this is it for the month of preparing the first video. Uh, we did go over weather. And um, next, uh, the next video in this series will be dealing with camping. We'll tag on some more weather on camping before it's over with. All right, guys. This is Patrick Minton Outdoors. Be prepared.